So what are the basic principles of visualization? Well, the first one is above all else, show the data. This one comes from Edward Tufte, um, who is very well known uh, for his books on data visualization. And the point here is emphasize the data as the primary purpose of any visualization uh, that you build. When you're deciding you know, how you want to put your visualization together, another takeaway is to recognize that position is the most powerful way to demonstrate differences. So things that are just spatially apart in a graph are going to be the most readily distinguishable to uh, you know, someone looking at that graph. Uh, a couple other takeaways, which we'll get into examples of, are that pie charts generally are bad and you should try to avoid them, and that 3D charts are even worse. Always design a, a visualization with a question in mind. So remember that your visualization should be trying to answer a question and to tell a story. And so as you think about what story you want to tell, that will actually help you figure out how you want to structure the visual, visualization. Make sure to know your audience. Just because a visualization looks really cool doesn't mean it's going to get the message across. So try to choose the simplest visualization you can to tell the story that you want to tell. And finally, use a high data to ink ratio. And this actually relates to that first point of showing the data. Any ink that's on the page or on the screen uh, of a graph should in some way be helping you communicate the message that you want to communicate. And anything that's on there that's just a distraction is something that you should consider removing. When we say, you know, show the data, what we're really talking about is uh, the relationships between different types of variables. So quantitative variables are things like one, two, three. These can be whole numbers, or they can include you know, decimal points um, out to you know, multiple decimal points, for example. Categorical variables are also known as nominal variables or discrete variables. Uh, and these include things like you know, the name of a country, uh, an individual's sex or gender, or an individual's race, where there's no natural ordering to things. These just refer to different categories um, along the same kind of axis. And finally, ordinal data are data that we won't interact with much in this course directly. Um, this includes things like small, medium, large, where small, medium, and large are in effect a type of category, but they have a natural ordering to them which makes them in some senses similar to quantitative data. So if you have ordinal data in your data set, you'll want to think about which of the you know, uh, types of plots that are useful for quantitative variables versus categorical variables are going to most effectively uh, communicate your message. This is a paper from 1986, which was designed to illustrate which are the perceptual tasks that are easiest for humans to, to perceive when they're looking at different types of data. For all three of the types of data, quantitative, ordinal, and nominal, you'll notice that changes in position are the easiest to perceive. And after that, it changes a little bit. So for quantitative variables, the next most easiest thing to perceive is a change in length. Um, and then finally, a change in angle and then for nominal variables, the next most uh, easiest to perceive change after position is actually a change in color. So just keep this uh, figure in mind as we get into some of the examples of ways that, uh, you know, types of relationships that we want to visualize. So we said that position is the most powerful way to perceive difference. So if we have a single variable that's quantitative, how does that actually play out? The most common way that I illustrate a uh, distribution for a single quantitative variable is a histogram. And if you look at a histogram, the lowest and the highest blood pressures um, on this particular histogram are separated in space positionally. And then the counts are separated uh, by length, such that higher counts have a longer length uh, in terms of the actual bar of the histogram. 
So this is how histograms take this idea of position and length being kind of the two most important factors and turning it into a visualization that effectively helps you communicate a distribution uh, to a viewer. For a single categorical variable, bar charts are kind of the most effective way of communicating this information. And so if you're looking at the number of people who live in each of the different regions of the US, you can see that the most amount of people um, live in the South as compared to the other three regions. So the different categories are separated in space or positionally, and the counts are expressed in length, which is the second most easiest thing to perceive. We could have actually separated the uh, bars using color, which I know was the second most uh, easiest to perceive difference for categorical variables, but length and color tend to you know, work somewhat interchangeably, um, and we'll get into examples of why later. But in this case, since the count is a number, um, even though you know, a region is a categorical variable, we're gonna use a bar chart to illustrate the difference in counts. If you've got two quantitative variables, scatter plots are really nice because the main thing a scatter plot is doing is helping you separate the points in space such that you can visualize them easily. So if you were looking at the relationship between weight and systolic blood pressure, this scatter plot is helping you visualize that relationship by separating the points in space. If you have two categorical variables, my preferred approach to kind of take advantage of the uh, things that we learned about perceivability are to use a stacked bar chart where your primary variable is separated in space and the secondary variable can be separated in length um, and in color. And there's more than one way to approach this. And the way that you approach it really depends on what it is that you want to highlight. Do you want to highlight the difference in counts or do you want to highlight the difference in proportions? So in this particular bar chart, what we're really highlighting is the difference in counts, difference in counts. And the main takeaway for this particular bar chart is that there are more people who live in the South than there are living in any of the other regions and while you can kind of guess that the number, the proportion of men to women is similar across the regions, this chart isn't primarily designed to communicate that message. It's also hard to compare the number of women in the different regions because the bar charts actually don't start in the same place for women. Because this is a stacked bar chart, um, the red starts you know after the uh, blue ends, which makes this a little bit... Um, you know, difficult to read if that was the message that you were trying to communicate. In the case of wanting to highlight the actual, you know, differences between the number of men and women within and between each of the regions, we could similarly have a bar chart, except the only difference being that we give each category, uh, men and women, its own bar starting from the same point, such that it makes you know, raw counts easier to uh, visualize on the screen. The one thing we lose here is that we can't say cumulatively whether uh, men and women in the South uh, add up to more than any of the four regions. Um, in this case, it's relatively straightforward because both the number of females and the number of males is highest in the South. But if this was kind of, uh, the, if there were more women in the South compared to other regions, but fewer men in the South compared to other regions, you wouldn't be able to do that math in your head necessarily, such that a stacked bar chart like the one on the left would be better. And finally, if you want to compare proportions, something like the chart on the bottom right is probably the most useful. And if you look closely here, um, this is really just another way of expressing a pie chart because this is really just four pie charts side by side, such that what you're seeing here in terms of uh, what's being highlighted is the ratio of men to women in each of the regions separately. And we can see that where the blue line ends and the red line starts is pretty much in the same position across all the regions. So we can say that the proportion is about the same. If you're comparing a categorical variable with a quantitative variable, 
one of the most common ways to do this is to use a box plot. And in a box plot, the different categories are separated by position and the distribution of the quantitative variable, in this case, systolic blood pressure, is uh, separated by length. So this is just an example of showing you how some of the most common ways we are used to expressing relationships between variables take advantage of these uh, factors that are easiest to perceive for humans. So make sure that when you, uh, you know, design a visualization that you try to figure out what is the primary thing you want to highlight and try to separate that primary thing uh, positionally and then make a decision about how you want to separate the secondary item. So a quick word on pie charts and 3D charts. Now, for very, very simplistic relationships, uh, you know, where you're looking at the distribution of a single categorical variable where it's maybe only two options like men and women, um, you might be able to get away with a pie chart and communicate your message effectively. But pie charts and 3D charts can really muddle the message such that the reader gets confused. The reason is because instead of using length as a way of demonstrating a difference between categories, pie charts use, an use angle as a primary, primary way to demonstrate difference. An angle is not that easy for humans to perceive. And it's certainly less perceptible than positional length. Pie charts also distort the position because instead of being laid out uh, you know, far apart on a page or in a plot, the categories are actually interconnected in a circle. And so this makes it hard to perceive uh, differences as well. And then 3D pie charts make this even worse by additionally distorting size, such that more literal space on the screen doesn't necessarily translate into a higher value or higher percentage for uh, you know a given item. So if I were to ask you to look at this pie chart and try to figure out what is the third largest contributor to greenhouse gases, because the pie chart hasn't been arranged in any particular order, you know, from smallest to largest category, what's going to happen is you're effectively going to end up reading the numbers and you'll arrive at the conclusion that forestry is the third largest contributor to greenhouse gases. But you're not going to make that call based on the area of forestry compared to, let's say, industry or transport or energy. You're probably going to look at the actual numbers. And so why make people do all this extra work? Had this been expressed as a bar chart, it would have been relatively easy to tell what is the third highest bar by just comparing the lengths and the bars. This is a famous slide from a talk given by Steve Jobs where he was trying to promote that Apple had the second highest uh, or second largest market share among all smartphone manufacturers. And you can kind of get a sense that that's what Steve Jobs is trying to communicate, because if you look at the legend on the left, you'll notice that after RIM, which is the company that uh, used to make the BlackBerry phone, Apple was second in line in the order of listing. But if you look carefully at this 3D uh, pie chart, you'll notice that Apple is actually in third place in market share after the other category. It may not be apparent at first, because by positioning Apple in the front and making this a 3D bar chart, Apple actually takes up more space on the screen than the other category, even though Apple's percentage is less than the other category. So this was a really clever trick to make Apple's market share look slightly more than what it is and neatly be able to tell a story that we're just in second place and not have to say that we're in third place.